Hi guys, welcome to part three of the Arduino BMS project. In this part, I am going to attempt to fix this oscillation issue that we're having with it. Now, I do believe that there are sort of two issues that are going on with this. One is the voltage drop in the cabling between the battery and the uh, breadboard here. And another issue is just the voltage drop in the relatively high resistance contacts of the breadboard because one thing that I've noticed is every time I bump something on here it tends to go into this oscillation state. What I'm going to do to attempt to fix this first is adjust the software a little bit and how I'm going to do that is have it measure the cell voltages until one of them gets over a certain point and then have it start balancing that cell just as what it does now but the next time it measures the voltages it's going to shut the balancing back off so it doesn't have any of that voltage drop to worry about. Now one thing that we did notice before with the serial monitor on the computer is that when this thing did go into balancing like this, when the, the individual cell balance would be on, the voltage would dip down to like 3.8 or something like that. And when it turned back off, it would actually bounce all the way up to 4.4 or something ridiculously high. And what I'm going to show you is that the voltages that it's measuring are actually correct, though they're not correct at the batteries. They're only correct at the resistors in here. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that now. So I have channel one of my oscilloscopes set up to measure the voltage across the very first cell in this pack. So it should be somewhere around 4.2 volts because this is a relatively fully charged pack. But uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the scope and show you what it's actually doing. And here on the oscilloscope, you can kind of tell what it's doing. Uh, I've set up two cursors here. So I've put one cursor on the top, uh, that peak there, and I've put one on the bottom. And cursor A is the one on the top, and you see we're reading 4.4 volts, just as the serial monitor had read before, and then the bottom one is 3.72. So it is actually measuring the correct voltage, it's just not the correct voltage at the cell, if that makes any sense. So basically this is just a function of the voltage drop in the cabling, not the actual voltage of the cells. And just to demonstrate this a little bit further, I'm going to go ahead and take this meter and measure across the first cell. And you will see if I can get the uh, probes on there. Uh, we're actually sitting around 4.25 there. And if I can keep the probes on it. So 4.26, it's pretty high actually. And it's really, uh, you can see the light blinking down here. It's not really even changing at all to that. So it's in reality, it's just sitting at around 4.3 three let's say so and as I mentioned in the last part that 4.3 volts will actually slowly climb up as it gets more and more of a charge because this thing doesn't really regulate the voltage all that well so we'll go ahead and get into the code and see what kind of changes we can make to this all right so I've got the code pulled up and I've got the camera over here so you can see what's going on with our uh, setup and you can kind of see some of the issues that I have with grounding. Usually this thing would oscillate and then one eventually just kind of sticks on and if you mess with some of the components it will uh, fix itself again. So definitely some bad connection issues with this. Really one of the things I need to address with this is probably getting it onto a piece of perf board or something so that it's permanently soldered and I don't have to mess with all these little contacts and you know bumping wires and messing things up with that because it just seems so sensitive to that kind of uh, interference. But anyway, in the code, we're gonna try to uh, sort of fix the oscillation problem. And the first thing I'm gonna do here, and I'll show you what I'm gonna use this for in a minute, but uh, I'm gonna add another integer in here. I'm gonna call it flag, and we're gonna set it equal to zero for the start. Now I explained this in the last video as well but I'll kind of recap it here. This section of the code is taking 100 averages of the voltage on the cells and then it uses those numbers in the rest of the code. Uh, and the reason why I mentioned that is I'm going to take 100 averages instead of over the course of about a second, which is what you're seeing now, we're gonna take that over the course of about a tenth of a second just by taking that delay down a little bit. And you'll kind of, exp or you'll kind of realize why here in a second. But what I'm going to start doing with these, uh, these are the bits of code that just turn the cell balancing circuitry on and off. I'm going to set flag equal to 1 on all of these. Okay. 
So we got flag equal to one on the first one, flag equal to one on the second one, if it gets triggered, and only if it gets triggered. And then what I'm gonna add down here is another if statement. I'm gonna say if flag equals one, then we are going to add in a delay. We're gonna add in a delay of say three seconds. Not really sure what's an optimal delay for this, but, uh, but anyway, I'm gonna set that delay of three seconds and then what I'm gonna do is write all of the balance circuitry low. So I need one more of those and I'm gonna set cell one bell low, cell two bell low, and then cell three bell low. So this will just turn off the balancing circuitry now and I'm going to reset the flag to zero and we'll see what kind of a difference this makes to it. So right now we still have the oscillation problem as you can see and this is uploading. Done uploading and now we have two of them on and you'll see them flash off for a second as it takes a measurement. And if we look at the serial monitor, we can see what's going on with the voltages or what it thinks is going on with the voltages. We'll take a look at the actual cell voltages as well. You can see the last two here are the ones that are trying to balance. And really, if I wanted to, I could turn it down to like 20 averages or something like that so you wouldn't be able to see them blink uh, hardly at all and it'd be a much quicker measurement. Hopefully I can get in here without like blocking the meter. Uh, so that's showing 4.27 on the first cell. We're reading 4.25 or so over on the serial monitor. And the second cell is showing, if I can get the probes in there, 4.11. The serial monitor is showing like 4.3, so that one's off by a ways. Of course the serial monitor is me measuring that when the cell balancing is turned off and the last cell is actually at 4.3 as well. So as always what it seems with this thing is the connections get loose on the grounding points and then all of a sudden the measurements go completely wrong. So that's probably the biggest issue that I have with this thing right now. I'm gonna play with this thing a little bit, see if I can get it to actually measure somewhat proper cell voltages. Actually, maybe the first thing I should try to do is just disable the balancing circuitry entirely and see if it uh, can actually measure it properly. Probably not. Yeah, it's actually way off right now. So this is probably still the biggest issue that I have with this thing. If you look at the voltages right now, they are completely wrong. Um, you have cell three is just way low and cell two is way high. Cell one is probably about right, but uh, it's just an issue with the breadboards not actually making that great a contact. And if I start wiggling stuff, it'll probably go to where it's supposed to be. Uh, possibly anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with this some and see if I can actually get the voltages to measure properly and then I'll come back and do some more experimenting with the actual balancing. All right, so I did track down the issue with the ground and it turned out to be this wire seems to have a broken solder joint or something internally and if you bump it, it kind of goes extremely high resistance. So had to get rid of that. Uh, so that's just been replaced with this wire here and it seems to be measuring at least fairly accurately or within a couple hundredths of a volt. And you'll see that it's still kind of randomly coming on. And the reason why it's doing that is because the batteries are actually getting a bit of recovery to them, if you will. Same thing with basically any type of battery. If you drain them down and then you disconnect the load and you check the voltage across it, it's gonna be a little bit low for a while and then it'll slowly come back up. So, a bit of recovery charge is essentially what this is uh, showing. And you can see over here, the TX light on the Arduino actually basically shows you the updates because every time the voltage updates, it shoves it back over the uh, serial monitor and that TX light will flash. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna upload a version of code which has one change to it 
and that change is that the balance voltage cutoff point is 3.7 volts instead of 4.2 volts. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is to see how well this works for balance discharging the cells. And you'll see right now all of the cells, of course, are well above 3.7 volts, so they're all gonna be on, and then it blinks off for that uh, tenth of a second or so in order to measure the voltage. And then it comes back on once it realizes that the voltage is still too high. So I'm gonna let this drain the batteries down to 3.7 volts per cell, and we'll see how accurate it actually ends up being. And if that works well, I'm going to go ahead and set it back up to 4.2 volts per cell, and we're going to attempt to charge the batteries with the circuit. All right, so we're to the point where you would consider this to be done. Uh, essentially, we have brought the cell voltages down into a sort of storage charge state, and you can actually see over on the serial monitor, we are looking at about 3.7 volts per cell almost exactly. Uh, we're within 200 of a volt according to that, of course. So uh, at this point, you can see it is still kicking on every once in a while as the cell voltages float back up a little bit. But you can also see over here that our, uh, well, now it's not gonna do it because I'm pointing the camera at it, but it was doing the thing where it was uh, not balancing any cells for quite to quite long periods of time. So as you can see, yeah, we're still 3.7 volts almost exactly, so it's just barely getting triggered. But I'm gonna disconnect this and we are going to measure the cell voltages without this hooked up. All right, so we'll go ahead and use a meter and measure these cells and we'll see how close it actually ended up being. So cell number one is 3.72. Cell number two is 3.71, and cell number three is zero because I don't have the probes on there right. 3.67, so cell number three is a little bit lower than the other two, but that's not uh, too big of a deal. So that actually did balance discharge the cells and it did a pretty good job doing it accurately. All right, so the next step is going to be to plug this back in. We're gonna go back into the code and we're gonna change our voltage back up to 4.2. All right, then once that uploads, we can turn the power supply on over here and start charging it. So right now we've got three amps going into the batteries, which will actually should charge it fairly quickly. Uh, but you can see the voltages over here are starting to come up. All right, so I'll go ahead and let this charge and we'll see how well it does at balance charging this pack. All right, so the batteries have been recharged by the circuitry here. And if we check the voltage, we should be around 12.6. Yep, 12.62. And it has been holding right around 12.6 for actually quite a while now, about 20 minutes. So it's not doing the thing where the voltage would continue to drift up even though the, uh, well, essentially what it did before is when it went into that oscillation, it would just stop measuring the cell voltages and it just let it drift up. It would kind of try to counteract it, but it wouldn't do a very good job. Uh, now, what might be kind of interesting is if I shut off the charge current, uh, if it completely stops balancing the cells really quickly or not, uh, which it should do. Uh, right now we're not putting any current into it. The battery voltage has fallen to 12.56. Looks like this last cell over here is still a little bit high. Actually, we'll take a look at the individual cell voltages and see how it did. So cell number one is at 4.21 volts. Cell number two is at 4.19. Cell number three is 4.17. As you can see, as I kind of bump this stuff, as I mentioned before, the more you bump this stuff, the more it kind of acts up and does weird things. So you can see that this one's starting to try to balance again. So most of that's just bad connections in the breadboard. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and call that a successful modification slash fix to this thing because we have gotten this thing to balance discharge and more importantly, balance charge these cells correctly. So we essentially have a at least somewhat functional balance circuit here just by making a relatively simple modification to the code. 
So anyway, if you like the video, click on the like button. If you like the project, click on the subscribe button so you will see the next videos in the series. And if you want to see smaller updates on this project, you can go follow me on Twitter. There is a link in the description for that. And that's about it for now, guys. Bye.